Hi, everyone, and thank you all for coming to this Making Space event with Judy and Andrew Christensen, also known as His and Hers Live. My name is Lara Fontaine, and I'm the Community Engagement and Visitor Relations Librarian at NC State. As part of my job, I have the honor and privilege of being part of the Making Space team. Before I introduce our speakers, I'd like to share the history and mission of Making Space. Since 2015, Making Space aims to confront bias and systemic barriers to inclusion in the STEM fields by presenting the experiences and perspectives of underrepresented groups in science and technology, including people of all identities and abilities. In doing so, we seek to inspire all members of the NC State community to take on new skills, learn emerging tools, and be creative with technology. Through a series of public talks and workshops, this program centers gender diversity and inclusion in STEM, as it intersects with race, ethnicity, ability, and sexuality. Making Space is currently supported by a grant, grant from the Eastman Campus Engagement Fund. Please visit the library's website or go to lib.ncsu.edu slash making space to see more about our past and upcoming events. This talk is being recorded and will be posted to our site later for others to enjoy as well. And we also wanted to share with you our community agreement. The libraries and its partners are working to ensure that our programs are welcoming and affirming for everyone involved. That means that everyone from event organizers to attendees has an important role to play in contributing to a respectful and positive environment. That's why we ask you to reflect on the way you post comments and questions in the chat to ensure that they do not harm other participants. When we speak, the impact of our words is just as important as our intent. Today, we ask you to engage in this program with exploration and curiosity while being kind and intentional with your words for the sake of our community. Now, I'm very excited to introduce our speakers today. We have Judy and Andrew Christensen, a married couple who stream nightly together on Twitch as his and hers live. They are the owners of Juka Bowl, a tor tournament series promoting female gamers for Apex Legends with over $83,000 in prizes given out so far. As a result, they've helped hundreds of women start competing in their first esports e tournaments. They are also signed to the esports organization Kungarna or KNG as content creators, which has helped them expand their Juka Bowl tournament series. One of their primary focuses is on their inclusive online community known as the Good Vibe Hive. And today they will be sharing their story about becoming successful on Twitch and starting their women-centered tournament series. Without further ado, I present Judy and Andrew. Thank you so much. That is, that is, that was perfectly done. That was wonderful. And well done, Laura. Well done. Just, you know, kind of was making me almost emotional for a minute because hearing, hearing all of our hard work and what it's come to at this point, and we're so incredibly grateful. And this has been such an amazing career opportunity. And I do hope that some of you guys watching, um, maybe at the very, very least can be inspired to work in the esports industry because this is an amazing industry and it is absolutely booming every single year, year after year, this industry as a whole is growing so rapidly and there's no doubt about it. Women are definitely not represented at the level they should be when it comes to working in the esports industry or performing um, as a professional gamer. They're just not, the numbers are not there. The numbers do not make sense for those ladies. So thank you for that wonderful presentation. I'm so excited to tell you guys a little bit more about us, our background, go through everything from streaming to um, why we started the tournament series for women to why and how our duo stream works. That's going to all be on his end though, with that stuff and yeah. even to how we make money as streamers. So we're going to give you a little insight to exactly what we do here and um, we'll then open up for questions at the end. Hopefully you have some good questions for us. We're an open book and we're happy yeah. to help. But I guess first things first is we'll start out with maybe our background in gaming. Andrew, what's your background? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm Andrew. We, um, we do stream every single night on Twitch and we make a living doing this. It's, um, it's, it's something that when we got into it first, we did not expect to happen. We, um, we just both started um, very, very um, with a with a couple of viewers, and it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, 
So basically when, when I was younger, I was, um, I played a lot of games. I had a game boy. I had a Nintendo. I grew up playing games. It was part of my life. Um, Judy, on the other hand, did not play any games growing up. No, so we, had, we had very different childhoods. And, um, so it, gaming has always been a part of my life. I, I feel like it's, it was, it was always a healthy part of my life. Like my friends played, um, along with gaming, we were, we were played soccer. We, um, we had plenty of physical sports as well, but gaming was always like the backbone at the end of the day for me, we'd come home and play games to wind down before we went to sleep. Um, but Judy, I grew up with sisters. We, neither one of my sisters played video games. None of my immediate friends played video games. It was just not, it just, I, it just wasn't something that I grew up doing at all. And like I said, I think that maybe for people that, you know, grew up in the nineties, unless they had a, and this might not, this might be generalizing, but unless they had a brother, just, I did not know any women that gamed. Um, it was just not, it wasn't that common. And the older I get, and I see it's becoming a lot more inclusive now, uh, about 40% of gamers are women now, which is amazing, but we still have about 5% or less that play video games professionally. So we're getting more women that are playing the games, which is awesome. I just want to be able to see them play on a professional level too, because with gaming, there's no physical barrier that should make it so men and women need to compete separate. There isn't, there's no gender should not play a role when it comes to gaming. Now, with that being said, um, I'll get into why we've created our own league for women in the game that we play. But sure. Um, sure. again, with my involvement in gaming and how we started and started promoting women mm. in gaming, it simply came from, I'm just really competitive. I've always been competitive, played sports my entire life. Um, Andrew knows how competitive I am. We were together for an entire decade before I finally caved and said, okay, I'll, I'll go into you, that. What are you playing? This looks kind of fun. Yeah, explain let me, to let me, me what go, you're doing. Let me back into that for you. Okay. Explain how my first video game. So as, as I mentioned, um, you know, through, through my childhood, through, through grade school, um, through college, uh, and then even after college, I, I always had um, games I was interested in and would play, you know, with my friends, my brother um, and whatnot. So it was after after college, we we had we both had full time jobs and I still at the time I was playing uh, a couple games. I can just rattle a couple off. I was in the iRacing simulator. I was playing Starcraft 2. I was playing um uh, a couple a couple MMOs dabbling here and there. And then also I was playing um, a couple shooter games, which um, there was uh, Call of Duty Blackout and DayZ. Um, so those might sound familiar to you. Um, Judy wasn't interested in really any of those games except for um, DayZ and Call of Duty Blackout. They're, they're shooter games and they are, um, they are battle royale type games where you, you drop into a map and you have to kind of like explore the map and find gear and it's kind of a slow build up type game. It was um, the social aspect though. I heard you talking to your playing with your brother and another friend of ours laughing and I just said, "Hold on. You're having a lot more fun than me right now. I'm watching Netflix. What are you doing? Explain this to me. What is so fun about this?" Yeah, so it's uh it was my brother, we had some local friends um and some friends online and um we would get into a chat and we, you know af after work and we're just hanging out and we're like laughing and uh and going through these games and it's it not only is it a lot of fun but it it was a social experience experience for me and judy was realizing that she was she heard us laughing so she was she seemed interested so i was like hey hear me out um this is a shot in the dark like i don't there's a two percent chance this is gonna catch but i did i had an extra laptop and i set it up for judy and installed the game and i was like hey just jump in with us and just give it a try and um, let's just see where it goes. I, I want you guys to know this was in 2019. So we are not talking that long ago at all. This was early 2019. I started playing on his work laptop, sitting on the floor in this very room that we're in right now, sitting on the floor with a coffee table pushed up against me. So it was a terrible setup. I had an external keyboard plugged into the laptop and like a little 
very bad mouse that I use. So my first video game I learned on mouse and key. I don't even know how to use a controller. I don't know. It's 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 kind of a joke with our community and our stream is like yeah. how bad I am. So on basically, a we were using Judy. Um, she would like help us collect collect gear, and then she would she wasn't really much help other than that. She would just kind of follow us around, and she had gear. And um, but then event. Then a couple a couple days into it, she starts she starts to learn how to shoot the gun, and um, then she starts doing a little bit of damage. And the the good part about it um, was that we were we were pretty good at the game. So like it was a it was a four person squad. So between the we had three of us that were really good, and then so she could just really learn on her own. You know, it's it's harder when you're just thrown into it on your own. And probably discouraging, and maybe you you wouldn't have you wouldn't have liked that. The fact that I was able to um, win while being so bad was was nice, and it kept me engaged and wanting to get better and better. But I am a very competitive person, and I think that that is a key ingredient. And in gaming in general is a wonderful outlet outlet for those that have a competitive drive, especially over the last two years when we've needed to do a lot of our sporting teams and events that we normally would have attended or played in and participated in were canceled due to COVID. So yeah. um, it was a wonderful outlet where we could still express our competitive nature that we had and improve. And we, Andrew immediately, as soon as I started gaming, put a camera in front of me and said, we're gonna record this. I wanna record your process. I did not know what Twitch was. Even our first couple of streams, I did not know what Twitch was, but I was live streaming. I just had a camera on me. He told me we were recording it. And then Andrew kind of explained to me about careers in streaming. I slowly learned, oh, there's a chat. Now, no one was watching us, but I slowly learned that there are potential careers that can be had and told me about other streamers like Ninja, um, like Dr. Disrespect, and how it is actually an industry where that is their jobs. People make money through streaming. This is a career. This is a real industry. And I looked into esports as a whole, and again, this was in 2019, and I'm just shocked at what I saw and just didn't even know about this whole side that existed. I worked in finance, in mortgages. Like it was so different than anything that I had done before. Um, and, you know, we went from one viewer to three viewers to nine viewers and just started to make friends along the way. And I was learning and fine tuning my skills as a gamer. Again, always being really competitive. We've always loved the idea of bringing people together. So we just out of nowhere created a tournament series and I didn't know it was going to grow to anything. So I, I named it after myself. <laughs> now we can't change the name, but I named it the Juca Bowl. So that's kind of what stuck. And um, every week for the first couple of weeks with it, we'd have maybe only five teams of three that would participate in it. But I was the only woman. There were no other women that were competing in it. And I was so frustrated and I felt bad for Andrew and whoever our third was because we had no chance of winning this because I was still learning how to play video games. So I made a rule of said, well, if Andrew has to play with a woman, everyone should have to play with a woman. And it started out as a way where I thought it was going to be a handicap for all the teams. And I was so wrong. It's just that women are not asked to play on games. It has nothing to do with a handicap because I met some, the first couple of women that I met were so good at the game, better than a lot of the guys at the game. Their communication skills were better in the game. Like it was, it was insane how quickly I learned that making a mandatory rule to have a woman on every single team did not make it so we were winning. We were still losing every single tournament we hosted and entered, but I met some amazing women along the way. And I still am friends with some of the first ladies that played in our first couple of tournaments and our tournament series grew and became popular because we did not want three dudes just to have to play together because it makes them step outside of their comfort zone and actually have to involve a woman on their team and the women loved it and we started making friends with a lot of women in gaming and it's just taken off and we're actually close to $100,000 now that we've raised and given away for the Apex community. And most of that has been with a one woman requirement per team. Uh, we do have a lot of different series now, and we have actually an entire league that we have created called the Ladies Cup. And through everyone's support, through our community's support, we have secured a contract with a, a tournament organization called Box Fight Championship. And I just want to say thank you so much to them because because of them, 
we have a $6,000 contract that is just going to our women's league that we do every single Tuesday. We have a discord of about 550 women that want to compete in this particular game. Apex Legends is the game that we play. And it's just amazing. Every single week, we have 120 women that compete and there's nothing else like that for them. There's, there's just not, there's not that outlet. And I'm so happy that our humble beginnings has grown so much to that from me sitting on the floor with a laptop, just learning how to game to now being an advocate for women in gaming and just realizing that there's not enough female role models for these ladies. Um, I'm hoping that we can see, like I said, out of all gamers, about 40% of them are women, but less than 5% of them play esports professionally. And I want to see that number change because these women have the skills without a doubt to play professionally. They're just not asked to be on the teams, the really good teams. And we're slowly starting to see that change. And the reason why we have our women's league is not because I want to separate men and women. It's just because they they're behind right now, as far as the terms of the game, because they have not had the same opportunities that men have had yeah so in in apex for example um a lot of the most most of the top teams are, are, are three they're, it's three person per team so it's three it's three guys normally um the the big difference there and what we're trying to, to the gap we're trying to bridge is that since day one when the game come out these these three stack guy teams um there's a few popular ones they um, practice they've, together they've been together from day one and they've they've played since day one in all the tournaments they do all the rank together and um and they were probably playing together before apex even came out um so now we have a ladies series there were there and there's a couple females mixed in um but they're only a couple in in the pro in the pro scene um what we have now is with the ladies cup that we have we have um once a week we have a lobby set up specifically and it's just it's all ladies and they get to run through um, just like just like the guys have been doing for multiple seasons, um, a full session of um, of games, and they really get that experience, which is it's a completely different experience than just opening up than your just game opening and playing. Up the game. It it's, is. It's, it's a like different a, a style whole of different, playing. If you ever played a professional sport versus like a recreational sport, there's a there's a big difference there. And unless you're unless you're playing at that upper level, it's really hard to get that. Um, to learn, to learn and get that. So we're trying to, we're, we're bridging that gap right now. And um, it's been a lot of fun. We've met so many amazing people and uh, we're just in the process of doing that on a weekly basis right now. And we're seeing um, this, we're just seeing so much progress and, um, and it's, it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we do also want to talk a little bit about how our gaming setup has evolved. Like I said, from the humble beginnings of sitting on the floor with a coffee table pushed up against me to the technical setup to how we even make money as streamers so we can hopefully inspire people to maybe give this a try as a career moving forward sure. um, and then what separates streamers from one another and um, how, what effect it has on our relationship as a as a couple that mm -hmm. streams together yeah so I'm going to be honest with you guys I have a background in finance I have a background in mortgage lending I have a background in sales so I think that my sales background has been really helpful in terms of I love talking to people. I've always loved talking to people. That's what's helped uh, the stream grow, the community grow. I've always had a mentality of bringing people together, the tournament series. I feel like I'm more of the idea person, but as far as technicals, that's why I'm really glad that this is in front of a STEM audience because I this is this is not me. This is not me at all. And I, I'm amazed at people that can get this stuff to work. I just learned the other day how to actually turn on my PC. Yeah. So Andrew's going to cover the technical parts of what we do here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like the, and there, and I, and, and hats off to the streamers that do it all themselves. You know, we have a lot of streamers that, um, you know, they're doing all the aspects like Juka just said, trying to do all the, all the team building and whatnot. And they're also doing the technical aspects. So the fact that we have two of us, I would highly recommend, um, working with somebody or your significant other or, or whatnot together, if you're ever going to get into this type of thing, because it, it's a lot of work and it's actually a lot of fun to tackle together. I would imagine if we were doing it separately, that it would probably be stressful on the relationship because it's extremely time consuming. Um, but anyways, I'll get into a little bit of the, of the setup. So as you can see, uh, well, you might be able to, we have, there's three computers in the front. Um, 
And of course, we have we have we each have our own gaming computer, which we, which we play and uh, talk through and everything. And then we have one streaming computer. And you can do it. A lot of people just have um, their their game and their stream all produced on the same machine, but it's very strenuous on the machine to do that. And it's it's very um, to have a have a dedicated streaming computer that that does all the processing for um, for when you're broadcasting. I would highly recommend that. Um, it's just easier overall to just have them separate instead of trying to cram it all onto one machine. Um, so that's why we do have three computers instead of just two. Um, at first, I was trying to stream it on my computer, and I did have I did have a high quality computer. It just is it's um it's it's tough to do, and because we have so much stuff connected to the stream PC, we have uh, four cameras connected to it. We have um, mic we have microphones. We have a so much going into that PC that it's just nice to have it dedicated so that the motherboard isn't being overwhelmed with so many connections and trying to run the actual video game. So I would recommend if you're doing any of this type of stuff to have a dedicated PC that uh, that does the streaming, um, and then having your own PC to do the gaming and all that kind of stuff. It's it's just nice to have it separated. So um, what we do is from the gaming computers, um, you have to connect it to the streaming computer. So um, Elgato, we're not sponsored by them, but they make a really good product. Um, a couple other companies do as well. And um, so you just um, basically you hook the gaming computers to the streaming computer using this Elgato um, capture cards. And um, they're great. They, they send over the video feed and they send over the sound feed. And you can actually connect uh, multiple into one streaming computer. Um, that's something that we just, we hope to work and it, it just does. It, it works because there's software on the back end. And uh, we use software called Streamlabs OBS. And uh, it's, there's, a, there's several different free softwares that you can use to do the broadcasting. So on the streaming, <clears throat> let me grab a sip of water. I feel like I've heard you say this speech enough when we do have people come and ask us about yeah. this that I could repeat some of it, but um, yeah, I think the hardest part of our entire setup, and I feel like this is not the best representation of it because our audio right now is not how we normally do our audio. So I know that those of you that are watching that watch mm -hmm. our stream, we probably sound a little different than how we normally sound with our mics. Audio is the hardest part, I think, of what we do without a doubt yeah it's something we're constantly tweaking and always working on being this close together playing a highly competitive game i'm gonna raise my voice i just it just happens it happens involuntarily i i, I don't know why or how but it just sometimes it does says. happen it happens so the audio <laughs> the audio is the hardest part we have uh so we, we we each have our own microphone but we sit very close to each other so we have uh software that we use for that as well um to help uh, reduce the feedback so we don't echo in each other's mics. And um, that's called Voice Meter Banana. If you ever want to look into that, it's, uh, it's really, it's free. All these softwares are free too. It's, it's great. Um, so anyways, the, uh, we have the three computers, we have the audio, and uh, we also play music. We have, um, I have a USB audio device as well that I can turn on and we can play um, guitars and, and bass through the stream PC as well. Um, we have, um, and then just the just the setup in the room in general. Um, Judy, what are you smiling at? Am I missing something? They're saying they've. Um, our, some people from our community are here, and they're saying they've never heard me yell. Oh, they've never heard you yell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we do have we do have things on the microphone so that if you do happen to yell for some reason, that it it reduces the sound, and that's through voice meter banana. Um, and uh, once we get, we'll have a Q&A later. I'm sure there might be some, some other technical questions I could answer. Um, but it, it is amazing. All, all, the, all the USB, there, we literally I have a USB extender on the stream PC too. There's literally 20 different things plugged into that stream PC. And, um, and it just all, it all runs through Streamlabs OBS. And, and Streamlabs OBS, if you're unfamiliar with that software, you just start with a, a blank canvas and you can add a camera, you can add a scene, you can add a picture. You can you can just piece it all together like a puzzle, and over time you can make uh, really cool layouts. Um, and it's free and customizable. And uh, I would I would highly recommend checking that out if you're going to do this. Um, but yeah, I mean beyond that, 
you just have to have uh you need really really fast internet we we're pushing uh three full internet connections through at all times for like eight hours a day luckily they don't charge uh for bandwidth on that because we're probably i would assume we're probably pushing more bandwidth than uh like half of our neighborhood like we're just we're flooding we're flooding the networks um and um yeah then we have all the monitor setups you can have dual monitor triple monitor setups um and that's so that you can watch your game and have your chat up at the same time we have um monitor arms that we've purchased uh these are uplift desks and um they they have really nice monitor arms that you can get with them we each have our own cameras that go into the stream pc and um you can you can go the sky's the limit with the cameras um and then you know of course the lighting and the green screens um we you're seeing me right now through a, a green screen chroma key the wall behind us is all green um, so you can see um he has it set to show whatever you can see on our desktop now we do have a lot of different backgrounds and overlays because we do host tournaments am i able to go through any of the screen changes without breaking things yes okay so for example and this is my favorite part because i just can push buttons pretty easily. Um, one of our screen overlays would be like this one, for example, when we're streaming. Um, sorry, my chair is cut off a little bit here, but we have the dog camera with this one. Um, another one when we're both playing the game. This is really unique in that we have the room behind us. And this is, again, all Andrew's idea, but the possibilities are endless. And it's something that you can constantly tweak. If you are a creative person and you love talking to people, I think that a career in esports, a career in content creation is just absolutely endless. Like you, you, you can do so much and I wish we could spend so much more time even on the different scenes and setups, but with this one, so here's my computer, for example, and there's Andrew's computer screen. Sometimes you'll see just me like this when I'm playing solo or if Andrew's taking a break or if Andrew's solo, he put me up here because <laughs> I never stop talking. I'm even on his screen. Yeah. You solo. need to, yeah. Um, and then some of the other ones are that we'll have, this is our main one when we're just chatting with the community. Um, I even have, like I said, I never raise my voice. I don't know why I have this screen on here, but we do host a lot of tournaments. So when we're doing our tournaments, we have our casting desk where we will hang out and go over scores, talk a little bit about the, what just happened. Um, I think we even have, yeah, we have, we have a lot of scenes. These are all created through something called a stream deck down here with just the change of a button, I can do so many things. I don't even know if this is gonna work, for example, but even GIFs, I don't know if that came through for you, but there was a man screaming when I do that normally. Um, but we just, you know, it's endless possibilities and creativity that you can do and create it to make your stream unique, to make you stand out as an individual. And um, this has been such an amazing career and we've only done it for just, just under three years now. Um, it's just been, it's been an incredibly amazing bonding experience for us and extremely rewarding because I just did not realize one, anything about Twitch or the gaming industry as a whole, but two, how the women of this particular game and other games really need the support. There's just, they just, I, they're so good at this game. And if I didn't do it, I'm sure someone else would have, but just the the fact that we have an entire the, the only league for women in apex apex is one of the biggest games and has been for the last two or three years yeah some of the other some of the other games have a sponsored ladies league from the manufacturer ours is not sponsored by ea EA does not sponsor this any of the events we do this is through andrew and i what we've done to grow our streaming community to get the attention of an organization like kng kungarna which we did we signed with them a couple months ago and part of when we signed with them is that they own a company called BFC, Box Fight Championship. And part of that was that we would get a certain amount of money to do our gaming um, tournaments that we love doing. And we didn't really get into the women in gaming at that point. But once they got to know us and I got a little more comfortable with them, I told them that I want a series for just my ladies and I want money for the ladies. So yeah. the ladies are going to have their own series and they're going to get paid. And they were like, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so awesome. it's, it's such a good experience for um for the ladies. And um, you know, we we always we pretty much almost every night have people come in and say, Hey, why why don't why don't you just why don't you just throw the ladies teams in with uh with the men's teams? And it's and like you said before Wait, Andrew, you might be muted. Are you muted? The host would like to I think we're good. No, you're muted. 
one muted. <laughs> Laura Aria. said, that's enough of you, Andrew. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. There was an echo and I was trying to fix it. I should not. No I'm worries. not a tech person either. That's why I'm not doing it. You're this. hearing him through my mic. Yes, I will mute when Andrew's talking. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, just, Laura, just, just, yeah, just interrupt, just yell if, um, okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, no worries at all. You can, we, we you can interrupt, interrupt at any time, please. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is that we, like we said earlier, we, we, we get asked on like a nightly basis, hey, why don't you just, um, throw all the, all the ladies' teams in with all the men's teams? And it's like, well, like we said earlier, the men's teams have been playing together for multiple years. These ladies' teams are all brand new and we're, they, they need the experience. Um, and, the, and to just get comfortable with the, with how the pro, the pro comp and everything works. Um, and it's in, in a weekly basis, we see improvement and, um, and that's why it's important to do this. It's, um, it's, it's just a very comfortable place where, when it's an all ladies cup that they can just go in and really, really, um, sharpen their tools and, and, you know, get ready, get their team ready for hopefully in, in the near future, jumping in and, and competing in those. And I don't know if I shared this stat earlier, but um, esports as a whole, we've said, is just an incredibly huge industry, but it is not represented by women at the level we want it to be. I've talked about how 5% or less, actually, of women play vid video games as professionals. Let's forget about playing as professionals. Let's just talk about the esports as a whole, like that work behind the scenes or that work with organizations. It's about 84% are men. So the fact that it's just not being presented to women as a career is just, I, it, I just hope that changes. And every year these numbers are changing more and more and more, but out of gaming, 40% plus are women, but only 20% are doing, having careers in the esports industry and less than 5% are playing professionally. So it's just that I guess, um, the number, the first thing that has to happen is women have to show an interest in gaming. Women have to start playing games. And we're getting to the point where almost half of gamers are women. So that's step one. Step two, I would like to see more that are playing professionally. I really want to see that number go up. And I'm hoping that our little league that we've created uh, for women can in inspire some of these ladies, at least to some extent, or especially some of our young ladies to start competing at that high, high level. Um, but I want to see more that work, that have careers, that work for organizations that are like marketing managers, that are CEOs, CFOs, COOs. Like I want to see them involved on the business aspect of esports too. Because once you have those role models for women that are not just working for women's groups. Now there are some amazing women's groups in gaming, but I want them to work for the industry as a whole, not just the women's groups. I want to see them work for TSM. I want to see them work for cloud nine. I want to see women that are working in these organizations um, on that end. And I think that as we get more involvement with women in gaming, we will see that. But I just think that once there's a couple more big role models that it will eventually trickle down, but I'm really, really excited and honored to be a woman in gaming. And I know that any woman who has ever played video games has probably experienced, unfortunately, some type of sexism. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I didn't play my first video game until I was 31 years old. So there's really not much people can say at this point that really affects me too, too much. But if I had started when I was younger, moments like that would have been incredibly frustrating. It might have been discouraging uh, for me if I had tried when I was younger or if I didn't play video games with my husband. So I just want that mindset, that stereotype to change. And I just, I just, I think that if we can promote and continue to do these tournament series that it eventually will, um, for sure. And just, you know, be more inclusive. And that's, that's our main goal and our, our mindset, but yeah, the women are afraid to use their mics and always have been afraid to use their mics with some games. And that's just, that's terrible. And if, and if a woman does well, it's because she got carried or, you know, it's just like you can't, or if, or if you lost, it's because you're a woman. And I'm just, I'm so sick of that. That is not true. Let me tell you from someone who it has an insider's perspective. Some of the women that I know are so good at this game, incredibly better and better team players than a lot of the men. So I just want that stereotype to change and to just realize that esports is one of the amazing sports where genders do not matter. Women can compete alongside men. There's no physical barrier that needs to separate the two. And I just can't wait for it to be more inclusive year after year. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, so I'll just I'll just uh, change course a little bit here. Um, we did want to talk about uh, some other aspects as well, um, we'll and we'll get back into that. Uh, but one other aspect is um, they kind of go hand in hand is uh, stre- streaming like we do. It does it does produce money. Um, it does take a lot of time. So um, you know we can't do this is kind of what we do full time. Um, when it takes this much time, it has to make money. Um, so we'll go into how that works and um, and also just the work outside of streaming, kind of what that looks like. Um, so I mean, when you're a full time streamer. Um, that's, that means we are streaming. We probably stream seven, probably on average six or seven hours every single day, seven days a week. Um, and, um, so the, the main way we make any money is not through Twitch. Um, we're not like assigned with Twitch to make money from them. We make money directly from the community, the people that interact in our stream and, um, the people that we, we play with and talk with and, um, and how that works is they can they can subscribe to your channel and um so they pay um i think it's 4.99 a month and they basically that that for them it allows them not to have any ads on the channel you get some other little perks like you get to do these special emotes and uh, some other little cute stuff but primarily that's just supporting the streamer and um that allows us to be able to dedicate as much time as we do to the channel there's also um basically they're called bits uh, but basically it's just like tipping somebody you know like if you were at a restaurant or at a bar you could tip somebody some money if, if you like what they're doing um so yeah you can you can either subscribe to them like you would to netflix or anything else or you can tip them some money on the side as well and um yeah i mean it, it is a like i said i like judy mentioned earlier um before we started streaming and and i still currently do i watch other streamers and i and i subscribe to other streamers myself so, um, you know, instead of uh, watching te- television or, or watching YouTube or whatever, I'll watch streamers because I enjoy that and I enjoy the content and I enjoy the interaction. Um, and so that is just something that if you're, if you're not familiar with it is a huge market. It's a huge emerging market and it's growing every single day. Um, and so there's people um, on the back end like, we, like us that are they're spending a lot of time uh, dedicating a lot of energy to doing the streaming, the content, and um, that's that's generally how they make money. And then once you are able to grow your community, you can start to try to seek out. And I think this is something that I wish they would make more open to streamers and content creators, but there's something called a media kit. And I don't know if anyone watching this from um, NC State is, is involved with any marketing um, or if you, if there's any marketing background with you guys too, but the a media kit is extremely important. You need to put together what makes you and your stream marketable to sponsors, figure out what sponsors work best for you. We always have dogs hanging out on our stream. So we've actually reached out to a couple of dog type sponsors. There's a company called Chewy. There's a company called Pet Honesty that does pet supplements. Figure out we're really big into health, wellness, and fitness. So we got with a, um, an energy drink company that allowed us to make our own branch chain amino acid creatine like post-workout drink. Um, We also are very conscious of like health. And like I said, our eyes, neither one of us wear prescription glasses. We're wearing just blue light glasses right now because we have bright lights and screens in our faces. So we've reached out to sponsors of of companies, things that we would use. And you need to have what's called a media kit. If you do not know what that is, it is extremely important where you have to put together your statistics and it's constantly changing. You put together photos of yourself, your stream, Twitch data, how many CCV concurrent viewers you have, you really need to, this is a, this is a career field that has endless possibilities. The more effort you put into this, the more successful you will be. Even if you are a small stream, if you market yourself incredibly well, and you need to look into, and like we said, be comfortable with learning how to do a lot of this stuff on your own, whether it comes to the technicalities of setting up the stream quickly on the fly, fixing an audio mistake. Um, fixing some issue with a camera or lighting or anything, or also even knowing how to market yourself in your stream. And that's something that was not taught anywhere. I just figured, okay, I'm reaching out to these organizations and companies. How do I make money? How can I get them to sponsor us so we can get prizes for more of our tournaments? 
and you just need to be really comfortable with marketing yourself and a media kit is is absolutely huge for a streamer to have and nobody talks about that for whatever reason and that's how we were able to snag some of our sponsorships uh, we put together a kit about ourselves who we are how we can promote and these are our current numbers and you have to go after them you cannot sit back and wait for sponsors to come to you yeah another interesting thing too um you often hear people and they'll say it as like an insult um you know how social media is bad and it's a waste of time and uh you know in in our industry it's it's the opposite it's 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 in, it's super critical um when we're on twitter uh, not only are we socializing with people in the community but we're giving updates on what we're doing um it's not just we're not just it's not just a waste of time when we're on tiktok um we're looking at what's trending um what's what's popular as far as like um videos and content we're making content pushing it out to our community um I want to quickly talk yeah. about TikTok though. Um, we have actually our largest following is on TikTok. We have about double the followers on TikTok that we do even on Twitch. I will say if you are looking to make money through a platform, spend your time and energy on YouTube. YouTube, you have potential to have and make a lot more money than you do on TikTok. Uh, TikTok's great to get the views, but we'll have a video that will hit 2 million views and I'll get a paycheck from TikTok for about $2. So I'll be honest with you, like, yeah, you're not making money from TikTok. It's more social networking. It's than more it so to bring them to your other, um, and it's, you want to use lots of different sources of social media to then bring them to. And I, I guys, again, any questions you have, we're an open book. I will be open and honest about things as far as earnings, as long as I can to an extent and not break any contracts. But the TikTok is is to get your get people to view you on other platforms like i said we've had two and a half million likes on our videos of tiktok and i think that in a year of tiktok we've made almost three hundred dollars yeah another so um, don't do tiktok for the money so like i said the um there's a there's a negative there's a negative uh connotation around social media and whatnot and you know of course some people some people um aren't getting, aren't getting a benefit out of it, but it depends, it depends on what you use it for. Um, so yeah, like Judy said, uh, YouTube's another one, uh, where you can, you can post, people don't always have time to watch your, your content live. So you can post clips, um, highlights and whatnot. So people can go check you out, um, when they do have time. Um, another, another very important thing too, uh, we have something called discord. Discord is like a big server where all your community can connect and, um, socialize that way. It's like a forum almost like Reddit or something, but it's, it's belongs to you. Um, so discord server and we, we are constantly in there um, on a hourly basis, checking on uh, who, who's saying what they're asking questions. We're chatting with them. So it's just like a constantly um, uh, moving and, um, and you're constantly interacting with all of these social medias, uh, these discord channels, you have this uh, connection to your community uh, 24 hours a day. And um, it's it can be overwhelming um, at times. It's, it's, it's very time consuming. But um, whether we're if we're live, you know, obviously, we're live, and we're here talking to you. But if we're not live, we're, we're, we're interacting with community still. So it's like, uh, you know, from when you wake up to when you go to sleep type of thing. And that's, I mean, we we spend every every moment awake, basically doing that's, this at the moment. That's another reason why I will say, Again, and I know not everyone's in the position to, but doing this as a couple, doing this where we can both share the burden of that or, you know, sh split the duties of that. Or even when it comes to reading our Twitch chat while we're playing or live streaming, it's so incredibly nice for us to be able to be like, oh, did you see so-and-so's message? Can you respond to that? Okay, cool. I'll do that. And it's just, it's, it's, it is nice to be able to split that and it's helped us and it takes a very unique couple to be able to play a competitive game together and to stream 250 hours a month together um and it's definitely brought us closer together as a couple but it is not for everyone if you like your a lot of your alone time and you do not want it's just it's not for everyone it's definitely not for everyone but it is something that we really really enjoy doing together and i at the very least hope that we can inspire some people that are watching this zoom call today or in stream um, to to pursue this as a career because it, it is incredibly fun. But do not, if I can give you any advice, do not start out streaming as your sole source of income. We have, 
full-time careers that have made money for us for over 10 years. I still have my job as a mortgage lender. Not sure how much longer, but I do still have that. Andrew still has his IT job. Um, and we are very, very short on time. But when you have a goal in life, sometimes you just, you work, you know, 70, 80 hours a week plus to make it happen. And this is a wonderful career opportunity that I highly recommend. And I think that a lot of our stream success has been because we were not pressed for money because we had other jobs and you can tell, and it conveys when you're live streaming and when you're doing um, the events. And if you can have an alternative source of income, at least when you get started, I think that that's incredibly important. Do not dive into streaming because it is a very oversaturated market. Figure out what makes you unique, what makes you different as a streamer and provide something of value for your audience. That's the number one thing. Why do you want to watch the streams that you watch? Um, are they amazing at the game that you like? Are they really funny? They make you laugh. Are they extremely wholesome? Do they make you feel good when you're there? Figure out what you want to provide your audience and take that and run with it. And a lot of giveaways. We gave away so much for the first year, year and a half, and we still do a lot of giveaways, but a lot of giveaways. There was, there was a long time where, you know, if someone gifted a sub, we gifted a sub right back or, you know, just, just a lot of giveaways and what goes around comes around with this. And the, the more effort you put into it as a whole, usually the more you get back out of it. And it's an amazing career opportunity, but I will say, I think we've actually already talked for almost 50 minutes. I, is it time for questions? Yeah, you, um, we could start getting some questions in um, for sure. For sure. I don't, I'm looking for. Yeah, where I... we had one question come in. Um, someone was asking about how moderation works, especially with the work that you do promoting women gamers. That's got to be a big part of sustaining a healthy community. That absolutely is. We actually have quite a few of our mods. Um, Twitch allows you to appoint mods to help keep your chat clean, to help keep your chat healthy. Um, they moderate the Discord that Andrew was talking about. They moderate our live stream because it is actually a breach of our contract with Twitch if certain things that are said are not moderated. Andrew and I could get banned as streamers. So mods are extremely important. If someone comes into stream and says something that breaks Twitch's terms of service, and we're not having it moderated, that's part of our contract that says it needs to be moderated. Um, moderation works where you pick a couple of very trusted individuals. And there are a couple of the mods right here in chat right now that will help and they know and you work with them of what rules do you want as a stream? And what rules, what do you want erased? What do you want addressed? Um, and it's just, it's something that you just need to have clear communication with them because it's, it's, it takes a whole community to be able to have the community that we have. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, a couple of the, I don't, yeah, there's, uh, there's so many people behind the scenes, whether it's, whether it's the mods or when we're running the tournaments, we we've uh, teamed up with a couple of people that help us with that as well. Um, yeah, it is, it is, it's a big, it's relationship building. A lot of it is. Um, and yeah, we, we, it, this is not just a just like a one man show. We'll have a lot of comments come up too, especially well, when's the all men's tourney and when is this? So especially since we do the women's events and our mods, they know how to answer that question. They know how to answer any of the other questions where if someone, you know, says, Oh, I'm gonna put a wig on so I can come win all the money. They they handle it incredibly well and we're we're used to it. We've seen we've seen it all pretty much everywhere online, as you guys know, is gonna have what we call trolls and the best thing you can do honestly are ignore them or just delete their comments, not fight back, because that's what they want is the attention with it. And that's why the mods handle it. So we don't have to, you know, break whatever thought we were going through and Sure. They, they just, they let us do our job. So it's nah, awesome. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. We've, uh, we've had, we've had a couple of our moderators that have been with us almost the whole time. Um, so we're very fortunate for that. Um, and you know, we've, we've met some really amazing people along the way that have allowed us to get to the point where we are. And, uh, yeah, we're very fortunate for that. Uh, a lot of, a lot of other channels struggle to have, um, you know, loyal, loyal people to their channels. So we're, we're very thankful. Another for that. question I saw that someone had, uh, there's two more good questions, actually. What else do we play besides Apex? I'll be honest with you guys. 
I really learned how to play video games on Apex. And it's kind of a joke with the community that I don't like any other game. Um, I don't know if you guys all remember your first video game that you fell in love with. That's what Apex is to me. I've only been gaming for two and a half, less than three years right now. And I just, I, I haven't found another game that really sparks my interest as much. I have streamed New World a couple hours here and there. Andrew tried to get me to dabble into an MMO. It was too slow. My adrenaline, I needed, I need the competitive adrenaline. I just, I don't, I, I'm still, I'm still figuring out who I am as a gamer. I think I'm an FPS gamer and I just, I haven't found anything else that I like as much, but I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still trying to adapt to who I am as a gamer, but I am not an MMO gamer. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the game Apex is a, is an extremely intense game. So uh, typically a lot of other streamers do do a variety of games where they, you know, you have your initial couple hours where you are super energized and you're playing like a, a first person shooter where you, you got to have lightning fast reflexes. And then you would transition maybe the second half of the stream into a more relaxed game where you could chat more. Uh, but Judy likes to just fry my brain all night. Yes, yes, yes. Another good question was how um, this might be too personal, but I imagine you have to keep some sense of privacy. But uh, do you have such open personas? How do you balance that? I will say initially not well. Um, Andrew and I were, I don't even know if we were going to get into this, but Andrew and I were victims of a very public swatting case in our area. And this was two years ago. So we were not even that, we weren't even big streamers. And I, I, we had maybe an average of 80 people watching us when it happened. Um, I guess at some point we were too open with our, location or our personal information and we had about 35 to 50 police officers and SWAT teams and actually got pulled out of our house got handcuffed and thankfully no one was hurt um, our dogs weren't hurt we weren't hurt and it was just an incredibly big learning experience um, and it was very public it terrified our whole neighborhood um, you know our neighborhood was shut down and that's something that streamers need to be careful of you need to you you need you do need to be a little bit private with your information, but I also think that you can, and if you are a streamer and you're worried about this, notify your local police that you are a streamer and you are a potential target of swatting. And that way, if they do get a suspicious call like that, they will try to notify you before they send out entire snipers and SWAT team to your house and pull you out of your house. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a hard balance, but it's something that we've learned the hard way, and we've hopefully tried to protect other streamers moving forward from our mistakes initially. Yeah, I mean, um, that, but that's one thing we do differently than most other streams is, is we do connect um, on stream and off stream with people a lot. Um, like I said, in our Discord and whatnot, that separates us from a lot of other streamers that are, that are more private. Um, so I would say, yeah, we, we almost sometimes communicate to a fault, but I think it's what makes us unique sometimes is we, we, we really like to interact with our community and we just, uh, we're just getting everybody the benefit of the doubt that they're, they're here for the right reasons. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things that you have to decide if you're going to be super private. You know, some people don't even use a camera, um, but I would say we're probably the, one of the least private streams on, on Twitch for sure. Another question is, how do you balance streaming with your jobs? I imagine it's tiring working from nine to five, then streaming for a few hours before going to bed. It is very tiring. Andrew and I do not have children. We are very fortunate that we work from home. So we do. We Well, now we work from home. We work from home now, yes. We, before COVID, um, it, it, this probably wouldn't have been able to happen. Um, I used to have to go to an office, and you also had to go to an office. So um, if we had to go to an office from nine to five, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Um, the fact that we're allowed to, to work from home, um, we, you know, we can get our work done whenever, whenever we have time and we can also interlace um, working on the stream stuff. So that's, that was a critical component for us. I'm glad we don't have to do this when we stream normally. I'm our audio, anyone who's not familiar with our stream, we're not using our normal noise gates, sound gates that we use with our microphones. So we're picking up in each other's mics right now. On our normal setup with the software that we use, which we're not able to use with uh, Zoom, it's it's different. I do promise you it's different. So this, I'm glad it's, it's not like this uh, for us, but 
it is something that we're always trying to fine tune and tweak. But um, are there any other questions about streaming? But yeah, we we work a lot. We absolutely work a lot. But our end goal is to be able to do streaming content creation solely full time. That is the absolute goal. We are working really hard. And I I'm I gave us a two year mark. I said if we can make the income that we want to earn two years of streaming, I will then I will then cut back on my work. So um, I work in sales. So my job is very flexible with time and with hours. It's just the type of job where if I don't work really hard, I don't make anything. And I'm not working hard at my mortgage job right now. And as a result, I'm not making anything with it, but it's still taking up a bit of my time. And um, the end goal, like I said, ideally is to not work three jobs between the two of us. And our stream has been extremely successful. It's just that uh, one thing I will say is if you go into streaming as a duo, your stream has to be twice as successful as an individual stream because we are ma we are trying to make two full incomes through one stream. And that's very difficult to do. So a solo streamer, I think that you have potential to make a lot more money if we did have separate streams, but we did this initially not doing this solely for the money. And our community is incredibly generous to us and they do treat us like two individual streamers often at times and I can never thank them enough and because of that that's why we stream as much as we do uh, we put in a lot of hours live and a lot of time outside of being live for all the events that we put on and plan and they know that and they treat us like they they, they treat us so well and I love our community so much uh, just one thing we didn't touch base on too is um when when you do when you do something like this, um, I would I would highly recommend if you were gonna have a character trait, it would be one where you're you're very interested in learning stuff. Um, we are we are now camera experts. We are now green screen lighting experts. We are audio troubleshooting experts. We are counselors. We are um, we're we are, counselors we now are too. Not official, but we are. We do we do um, help counsel some of our community. Um, we're very happy to do that, and um, we, we do feel like we're in a position where um, we we can help with that. Um, and yeah, you just you all of a sudden you're you're learning stuff on the fly, and um, it is very very different than a normal job. I would say a hundred percent we are um, we are spending more time doing this than we ever did with our day jobs. There is no there is no checkout. Um, when you're just, you're just off the clock, we, we are literally from the minute we wake up, um, doing this right now. And the only, the only way we're able to do it is because we're passionate about it and we're enjoying it at the moment. Um, you know, I, I, I hope that always continues. Um, it is to, to the, the community, um, Twitch and streaming is extremely competitive. So if you're not, um, the hardest worker, if you're not putting in the most time, it's not going to be successful. And there are people that are literally going all day long like we are doing it so it's it's just a super competitive market um and yeah you gotta if you don't if you don't love it it's not gonna work awesome um thank you all so much for um coming in and talking to us and being a part of making space that was really great and it had some really great information i loved hearing about all of the insider knowledge that's super helpful um, and I just wanted <laughs> to say, um, to just let folks know that we are going to be having a small tournament. Some, um, NC state teams of, uh, students will be playing an arenas tournament, and this will be on his and hers channel. So if you have not, um, uh, followed their channel, I recommend that you do so. And that will be tonight at 7 PM. Um, you'll hear me on there too. Um, but thank you so much for, for everything. And, um, yeah, uh, I guess that's it. Cool. Unless you have, thank yeah. you so much for asking us to do this. It was, um, it, it, this was amazing. This was, this was really inspiring. It made me sit back and think of our entire career path so far. So thank you so much. And yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, Andrew and I are always very easy to reach, probably too easy to reach, but feel free guys. We want to promote other people to stream because we've been enjoying this so much. So feel free to reach out to us through our stream or through Twitter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Thank you all. See you next time. Okay. See you guys later.